We've encountered many rescues over the years on this channel, but we've never made a video dedicated on how to spot rip currents, how to spot dangerous situations, and what to do if you get caught in a very dangerous rip current or in a big set of waves. In a lot of ways, this video is long overdue, but if you want to drop a like and support the dream, we really appreciate it. This video, you guys are going to get the full breakdown along with some good times in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Enjoy. The ocean is a constant theme on this channel. To us, the ocean and being in the water has allowed us to push our personal limits beyond what we ever thought was possible. And going out in the ocean is going into the unknown. Many of us spend our entire lives trying to predict what the ocean is going to do, so we can put ourselves in the perfect and most dangerous positions possible to get a glimpse of one of the most beautiful forms of nature and the most beautiful forms of the Fibonacci sequence that exists on the planet. You can spend your whole life looking at the ocean and trying to predict what's going to happen, and it can really help. But none of us are invincible out there. And when you get addicted to something like surfing, especially when it comes to bigger waves, the danger level gets higher and higher. And so do the adrenaline rushes. Anyone who has spent any significant amount of time in the ocean and chasing big waves has found themselves in positions where they question their entire lives out of fear. And it's a humbling experience to be at the will of such a powerful force of nature. There's certain times where it really doesn't matter what you do because the ocean will do with you what it pleases. In these moments, nothing is more important than staying calm and saving your energy. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in today's episode from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, is what to do when things go wrong, and what you guys can do, and what you need to know to stay safe when you're out there. Most everyone who's spent enough time around the beach is familiar with the term rip current and undertow. These are two very different things, but do you know how each of them form? First thing to know is there are several different kinds of rip currents and several different kinds of undertow. How many, you may ask? Well, you might have a better chance at counting the amount of grains of sand on the beach, because every beach and every swell at every beach creates different rip currents and different undertows. However, there are many similarities and we're gonna tell you exactly what to look for when you go to the beach. By far the easiest way to tell where rip currents are gonna form is by looking at the shoreline. When you walk out to the beach and you look down the beach parallel to the ocean, you can see most beaches bend and curve. This happens when there's gaps in the sandbar, meaning parts of the sandbar are deeper and other parts are more shallow. Typically, where the sandbar is deeper, it creates a bowl on the beach due to waves traveling further without breaking due to the depth of the water, making them more powerful when they hit shore, thus digging out more sand. Gaps in the sandbar form when sets of waves push over the shallow sandbar. This makes the water levels rise on the inside of the sandbar and 10 out of 10 times, the water has to go somewhere and that is back out into the ocean. When a big set, or in most cases, two big sets, or multiple big sets in a row, cross over the sandbar, all the water from those sets of waves meet in one place, and they have to escape back out into the ocean. This is the most simple form of a rip current caused by waves. Big sets pushing over the sandbar, all the water creates its own path, and boom, suddenly you're 100 feet offshore, seemingly paddling against a river, going out to sea. The most important thing to know when you get caught in a rip current is not to fight it. If it's shallow and you can get your feet on the ground, go parallel to the beach and you can even go out diagonal a little bit just never fight these currents try to ride them until you don't feel like you're getting sucked out anymore and then use the waves to slowly make your way back to shore make sure you never get too tired especially if you can't touch the bottom and a side stroke paddle or even a doggy paddle is a great way to conserve energy taking slow deep breaths and using your body's natural buoyancy to save your energy and to float in the water while we can spot rip currents from the beach by watching the shore and seeing where the deep water and the shallow water is when the waves get bigger they can do whatever they want and when a rising swell is hitting it can sweep through the area where you thought the rip current was going to originally form mix with the water from another set down the beach and all at once all that water will push across even the most shallow part of the sandbar it's important to always look out at the horizon and when you're in the water and there's waves washing towards you you can shoot up to the top of the waves look out the back and see if the horizon looks like there's sets coming in rule number one is never take your eyes off the ocean when there's waves most beaches in the world are not nearly as dangerous as Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Nearly every single wave creates its own rip current due to the giant bowls on the beach. And you can very easily see all the humps along the shoreline. And when a big wave in Mexico hits the beach, it funnels down all the arches and creates its own rip currents every single wave. That's why when we skimboard here, you never exit the water at the bottom of one of the bowls, like Cody did here. You go to the steepest part of the beach because that's where the least amount of water will be sucking out right when the sets hit. Now that we know that rip currents are caused by sets of waves or gaps in the sandbar, let's talk about what they call undertow. Waves are like giant tubes. Water goes in a full 360 and then in every direction. Some water goes up and some goes down. 
And just like there's big explosions up after a wave breaks, it can also happen going down. Which if you're caught in the wrong spot, you can very easily get sent to the bottom of the ocean and hit the sand. This is what people know to be undertow. But have no fear. You just have to wait five or so seconds for everything to calm, and then you can make your way back to the top. If you're getting pummeled, don't fight it. Just let it take you until the water calms again. And always remember to get a deep breath before a big wave hits you. I personally can hold my breath over three minutes. Simple breathing techniques can help you so much if you're planning on spending time in the ocean and around waves. That was actually the first place I went over the falls on a wave, hit the bottom, then got sucked back into the vortex and went over the falls again, hitting the bottom again. It's like a double undertow. And with all this information, I hope you guys look at the ocean differently than before. The more time you spend looking at the ocean, reading and predicting waves, the more comfortable and better off you'll be out there. It took me years to realize that the wave before the wave that I want to get is just as important as the wave that I'll be riding because not only the depth of the water matters, everything matters. Every single wave is different, vastly different. One wave might come through with say 100,000 gallons of water on this side and only 40,000 gallons or so on the other. Then another set will come through and it'll completely switch. Something I didn't realize about Cabo until I went there is all the water from the wave before gets sucked back into the wave that's about to break, making it twice as strong, twice as big and twice as gnarly. And this is something that only happens when the beaches are as steep as a place like Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And this takes the water being extremely deep and going from very deep to very shallow very quickly, kind of like where the ocean would meet the side of a mountain, except for there's beaches in between the mountains. Now that we've gone over all this and you guys are going to be able to stay safe and read the ocean better than you ever have before, we're going to jump into the final day of the skimboarding competition where we're going to watch the pro final and then get into results and I don't know, whatever else, whatever other crazy stuff we get into when we're in Mexico. Good news is we have a rising swell. Oh, the next couple videos are really going to take it up a notch and it's going to start getting gnarly. Of course, if you guys enjoy these videos, please drop a thumbs up and we'll get right back into it. There you go, there you go, see if you can snag one more.
Yeah, boys. Yeah, boys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude. Killed it. You killed it all weekend, bro. I appreciate you, Donnie. Yeah, thank you. Okay, congrats on the finals, my man. You did better than me, Tim. <laughs> Let's check on how Cody Grom's pursuit of becoming a legend is going. All right, looks like we'll check back later. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it, Paul. Paul Marina. Thank you. Yeah, Gracias. Ten minutes in between pro and everyone's trying to get laid. <laughs> Oh, iconic! Oh, dude. Fuck you! Fuck you, I don't know if he won, man. Oh, we got time. I was looking at clips earlier, and the one he thought he did good that I told him he didn't, I didn't catch. Yeah. You got it? Uh, maybe. You did? Maybe. You did it? Maybe.
Berkeley, Timoteo Gamboa. Second place on Bros Division, Ray the Lovers 2023, Tim Fulton. In primer lugar, first place, Chris Jair.